What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Black 2 walkthrough. In the last episode, we came up on the uh, Plasma... No, wait, we did that two episodes ago. We were already in the Plasma Frigate, and then we had to uh, do this little password puzzle thing to open up this barrier and then defeat Zinzolin for like the 21st time in this playthrough. And now we have two different ways to go. Well, we actually don't because uh, this grunt is blocking that way. So the only other way to do is, uh, or only other thing to do is take this warp panel, which will lead us to the control room. And guess what's going down here? That is right. Um, I haven't really spoiled it up to this point. I mean, then again, these games came out in what, like 2012 or something. But yeah, Colrus this entire time has been working with Team Plasma. He's kind of been like the brains behind capturing Kirum and all that good stuff. So we've seen him a few times throughout the playthrough and he's even helped us. I mean, remember he got rid of the Crustle in the Seaside Cave. Well, he gave us the machine to get rid of it. But uh, yeah, now he's uh, he's revealing that he's with Team Plasma and he's against us. So there's only one thing that we can do and that is battle him. That's right. Um, this episode is kind of going to be the climax of the whole Team Plasma plot. We've got Chorus, then we're going to take on some of the uh, Shadow Triad, and then we're going to head into a little um, separate part of the Giant Chasm and finish off the main storyline there. So, Chorus, if you have a, like, fire, ground, or fighting type, you're going to be chilling because um, four of his five Pokemon are part steel, and that includes his Magneton starting at level 50, knowing Thunder Wave, Volt Switch, Tri-Attack, and Flash Cannon. Now, unfortunately, he did outspeed and went for Volt Switch, did a good amount of damage, and if I had to guess... Oh, no, he sent out Magnezone. All right, um, I was guessing the Behem would come out, but... Here's Magnazone, um, also level 50, knowing a Flash Cannon, Discharge, Thunder Wave, and Explosion. So, yeah, I just got a free kill on his Magnazone. I don't really know why he went into that thing, but I will take it. Yeah, if you have Embor at this point in the game, this fight is uh, going to be somewhat easy, I would I would say. But here comes Behem. Um, this thing is just a plain Psychic type. All of his Mons, besides his Clink Clang, are level 50, by the way. But yeah, this thing knows Psychic, Calm Mind, Energy Ball, and Recover. So I guess watch out if you um, if you have like a water type out here or something because he does have a bit of type coverage with the energy ball. But I kind of wall him here with a Lipard. So we're gonna just hit it with Night Slash and we get a crit. Finally, one that matters. So down goes Behem and so far this fight is going great. But here comes his, uh, his good old Clink Clang. This thing's level 52. Now be careful. If you try to go for a ground type move because he is holding the air balloon so you're gonna have to hit it with something else first before you can hit it with a ground type move and it does say it as you come out into the battle anyways now i'm not expecting bambi to kill it entirely with jump kick but i would like to um do some damage this thing knows shift gear thunderbolt gear grind and giga impact and unfortunately it's setting up with gear grind which is um or sorry shift gear which is a little nerve-wracking. What is that boost? I think it's speed and attack. Yeah. So he's now got two attack boosts. Um, and two of his moves are physical, but I wasn't even looking and we got a crit. Yo, let's go. All right. Maybe for once the luck is on my side in this episode. Um, yeah, that was pretty lucky because Clink Clang can definitely set up and possibly sweep your team if you just don't have the right matchups. Out comes his Matang though. Remember this thing is steel and psychic, so fighting type moves won't work as well. It knows Meteor Mash Agility, Rock Slide, and Zen Headbutt. And, alright, good. We do outspeed because I'm pretty worried about a Zen Headbutt from this thing. And we kill in one hit. Alright, um, don't have to worry about a Zen Headbutt anymore. And that just means his first Pokemon is out last. Um, Magneton, by the way, is holding an Eviolite. So, it's probably going to be able to take one of these Flamethrowers, if I'm going to be honest. And other than that, I think it's just Clink Clang and Magneton that are holding items so oh great we get fully paralyzed of course we do of course we do but yeah you have uh you have no one to uh switch into now magneton so you are screwed my dude you're screwed but yeah colrus um can be pretty tough um if you just don't have you know oh it has sturdy anyway so he can't even one shot it if you wanted to but yeah if you just don't have the right matchups for like steel types or anything then you could find yourself in a little bit of di a dilemma, but he used a full restore. I used a full restore as well in order to get rid of this paralysis 
and uh, hopefully one more flamethrower will do the trick. I don't even think that evil light is going to help him. As long as we don't get fully paralyzed like four turns in a row, um, that would be that would be really bad, wouldn't it? That would be really bad. All right, there we go. But yeah, that will do it for Colrus. So uh, one of the main... Oh, he got sturdy again. Yeah, I forgot that activates again. But yeah, that is uh, one of the main like Team Plasma bosses down in this episode. And we have a few more to go. And we're also going to be battling the Legendary, um, which is cool. And of course, the Legendary will change up a little bit depending on the, uh, the Mon or the game that you chose. Not the Mon you chose. Um, it could be Kira infused with the Zekrom or with Reshiram. So anyways, um, I don't even know what question he's asking me here. I just hit no. Um, yep, sorry, Colrus. And I don't even think I need to go back to the doctor and heal up. I think I'm just going to heal up Embor and move on along. So yeah, Colrus is still like acting all nice after the battle. He's like, oh, good luck. Um, I don't know. Maybe he, he didn't really want to work with Team Plasma. I'm not too sure what the full story is. All I know is that we had to defeat him in order to move on. So now that you've defeated Colrus, the other warp panel will uh, will open up. Um, I think this grunt gets scared of us or something, right? Let me see. Yep, put the exclamation point on top of your head. And yeah, he's like, I pretended to be strong, but I don't even have any Pokemon. So he runs off. That is, uh, that's pretty funny. So yeah, we're going to get to this room and look who it is. Gets this. Oh my gosh, are we going to face him right now? Also, by the way, what is this setup? Dude's got like 50 cameras around the freaking boat. Um, but yeah, actually, it looks like a majority of them are just off or like corrupted. But yeah, gets this. He has a little bit of a different look in black too and white too. I think this is the first time we're seeing him, if I'm not mistaken. He's wearing like a cool little black coat. He's got his like cane or something. Gets this. You're an old man if you need a cane. But he is actually not going to fight you right now because the shadow triad appears. And, um,. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to let y'all take care of this. So here comes Hugh, and Hugh is actually still looking for the purloin. And boom, look at that. Oh my gosh, he finally found the purloin. But um, because it's been like a couple years, it's now a Lipard. I mean, come on, my Lipard's cooler, let's be honest. So yeah, Hugh is all surprised, and he's like, what? No way, that's my Pokemon. Like, dude, Hugh, Pokemon evolve, okay? I mean, you thought your purloin was going to be a purloin still after like two years or however long it's been? So anyways, while he just stands there in disbelief and doesn't help us whatsoever, we're going to have to take on the Shadow Triad all by ourselves, beginning with this guy, who I think is the same one that we fought in Opelucid City. He's got two Ponyards and a, uh, a Absol, so shouldn't be an issue here for Biking because we're quite effective with Arm Thrust. And yeah, we're going to have to take on two more uh, members of the Shadow Triad after this. And for Absol, I think I'm going to switch into Krusty, give our bug type a chance, because I think Bacon might be the highest level now. He's just had some really good matchups against all these Team Plasma people. Anyways, hope you guys are all having a good day. I'm not even sure what date this uh, this episode's going up. I'm, I've am i been doing a good job of getting ahead. I'm ahead by, like, I guess if you include this episode, about two weeks or so, which is uh, pretty good, pretty good. I'm going to try to keep on staying ahead of uh of schedule with this channel that is for sure and you know i gotta start thinking about what i'm gonna do next um of course i think i've talked about it before but i do want to do x and y but then i think i also want to do a rom hack i think that'd be fun so i want to do like you know maybe i do x and y on monday and then one of the rom hacks on friday i think that'd be pretty cool um of course it means like yeah both series would take a little longer but at least you guys are seeing like more of a variety, which I think is nice. Um, it's not just one game the whole time. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's crazy that the Black 2 walkthrough is uh, is almost over. I mean, we still have the whole post game. And this game does have a uh, pretty solid post game, if I'm remembering correctly. So definitely still got a little ways to go. I feel like we won't be starting those, you know, one or two series, depending on what I end up deciding to do. Probably won't be beginning until maybe closer to the summer maybe i don't know i mean only doing two episodes a week i feel like there is a possibility um ideally i could maybe um since you know by the summertime i'll be done with my freshman year of college and i'm kind of more settled in maybe i could go to like three episodes a week um like monday wednesday friday i don't know i definitely don't want to go back to daily though because i kind of realized that um it was hard for you know the viewers to keep up with 
watching every single episode and all that. And um, I remember when I made, I think I did a little update video or something along those lines um, a little while ago um, before I went to college about changing the schedule to Monday and Friday. And I think people would like that a little better. But I think Monday, Wednesday, Friday could be nice. Or uh, maybe I do something along the lines of like Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. You know, one of the episodes goes up on the weekend. I don't know. Um, but if I could eventually get to three episodes a week, that would be pretty cool. But I definitely want to keep this channel going, you know. Um, I keep on receiving all the positive comments and I enjoy doing it. So we're going to keep on going. And I enjoy just playing through these classic Pokemon games, man. I mean, it's good for the nostalgia, you know. We're all getting older and it sucks. But, uh, you know, we can still we can still enjoy our childhood games and all that good stuff. Anyways, down goes member two of three for the Shadow Triad. So I think all three of them have two Ponyards, and then their last Pokemon is uh, is different. If I'm not mistaken, I think this person's going to have an Excelgore, which is pretty nice, or Excelgore, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but first, we got to get through the two Ponyards that... Well, I was going to say, for some reason, they're not Bisharts, but I don't think Ponyard even evolves until, like, 52, so... You know, for once, trainers are abiding by the evolution um, levels because sometimes you see, like, illegal Pokemon that are fully evolved to, like, 10 levels before um, they're supposed to evolve. But, yeah, Team Plasma, you know, they're actually following the rules, um, which is surprising because they're the evil team and they're supposed to be breaking all the rules. I'm surprised they haven't found a way with all this, like, you know, having Chorus as their scientist. Um, I'm surprised they haven't found a way to, like, evolve Pokemon early. I mean, freaking, actually, hold on. Who do I want to go into? Let's let's go back into Crustle for the Excel Gore. But yeah, freaking Team Rocket was able to find a way. I mean, if Team Rocket can do it, I feel like anyone can. Let's be real. <laughs> um, but yeah, here's Excel Gore, evolved form of Shelmet. And we'll just hit it with Rock Slide. Ooh, Bug Buzz. Doesn't that lower something? I think it has a chance to lower our special defense, but it doesn't. So we're straight chilling. Did exactly half, though. Too bad Rock Slide is going to one shot. So down it goes. And uh, we defeated all three Shadow Triad members. So I think I will uh, heal up. And I mean, yeah, they're going to sort of zoom back in over on Hugh. And he's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my Purloin evolved. Like, dude, I I don't know. I don't know. Hugh's like whole um, beef with Team Plasma is pretty crazy. And... You know, um, there's a there's a sound that you guys may have heard in the background that you probably haven't heard in a while, and that was my dog scratching at the door. Um, yeah, still home for winter break at the time I'm recording this, and uh, you know, I definitely, definitely um, haven't missed him interrupting the recording and stuff. So we'll see how much further I go before I end up having to do like a quick cut or something like that. Anyways, just head down the stairs and you will uh, get out to this other little ice puzzle. Pretty easy one. Again, none of the ice puzzles around here are too difficult. And wait, I can't even remember. I was distracted. Did I heal up my Pokemon? Yeah, I did. Okay. And I'm going to keep um, Embor up to the front. And you'll see why soon. Also, I'm going to spray a Max Repel because there may or may not be a hidden item down here. I'm honestly not too sure. Um, yeah, there's nothing. I mean, there could be a hidden item. Nah, it doesn't seem like it. So just work your way around the edge and eventually you'll reach another little entrance to the giant chasm just up these stairs. And there's going to be a small room that you can uh, sort of walk through. I don't think there's any items to get in here. Looks like there could be a hidden item over there. You know I'm not going to check though. And uh, going to drop a save just in case because we've got the big legendary battle coming up. And then right after that you take on Getsis himself to like officially defeat Team Plasma once and for all. So let's head on through and uh, see what is going on. You can see that Kiram's been around here. I mean, these little ponds or whatever have been frozen. And here's Getsis standing in the middle of the room. So yeah, this is uh, this is where all the things are about to go down. You know, he's about to summon Kiram. And you can see like a blizzard's whipping up. Oh my gosh, there he is. How did he break out of the plasma frigate within like two seconds? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, Getsis is not showing any mercy. He literally tells Kiram to use Glaciate on us. And no lie, this thing is about to kill us. Um, he's charging up the move. Takes a little while to charge up. That's not, you know, convenient for Pokemon battles. But 
Look at this. I mean, we're about to die, dude. We're going to die. This is crazy. This is crazy. That's it for the walkthrough, guys. We're done. Oh, hold on. Guess who comes to save the day? No one other than the main man himself, N. It is absolutely crazy. N and his Zekrom. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time we see him all game. And I'm sure when these games first came out, like people were just freaking out. Like, no way N is back. Whoa. And um, yeah, he, uh, he saves us with Zekrom. However, unfortunately for Zekrom, um, Getsus and Kirim just aren't very worried because Kirim can actually fuse with Zekrom. By the way, if you're playing White 2, it's going to be Reshiram instead. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to have a little battle go down. Um, I think, right? I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember how this whole cutscene plays out. Here's the DNA splicers, though. I think this is what's able to fuse the two mons. So... Yeah, that's not good news for Zekrom, and it's not good news for us either, because eventually we're going to have to take him on ourselves. So, you know, DNA Splicers turns into that little triangle thing and then goes right into Kirim. Oh my gosh, no way, and then we get this cool cutscene. You can't see all of it, though, because, you know, um, y'all can only see the top screen, but right now Kirim's, like, on the bottom screen. He just powered up or something. I don't even know. He's going absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. And, uh, again, that is, that is definitely not a good thing. So, yeah, him and Zekrom are about a, about a showdown. You know, he's shooting Zekrom. Zekrom flies into the air. What? No. Um, Zekrom's going to avoid a couple of the things, but then eventually they're going to catch up to Zekrom, and he's going to get caught, and he's going to get fused with Kirim, and it sucks. Um, yeah, and sure, he saved our lives, but that's about all he did. Because, yeah, Zekrom just was not able to do much else. So, um, this is going to set up the final battle. I'm sure you guys have seen this cutscene before. But, uh, you know, it's always cool to see again. And, I mean, again, these games came out in 2012, 2011, somewhere around there. So, I feel like this cutscene was pretty cool for that time. And, yeah, now, ooh, I think it just glitched there on the top screen for some reason. I don't know why I did that. But, yeah, now there's the, uh, what is this? The Dark Stone, right? And again, it'd be the light stone if you're playing white too. But yeah, Kirim's going to take in the dark stone. And now he becomes the really cool fusion. Whoa, no way. So yeah, he's going to look a bit different depending on which game you're playing. But either way, um, it's going to be a dragon and ice type. And you're going to have to end up fighting this thing. And it's going to be level 55. So the highest level thing you fought up to this point. So Definitely be prepared. Um, however, you know, um, all you have to do is defeat it. You cannot catch this thing right now, though. So don't even try to catch it because it just won't let you. I think something with the DNA splicers or something is like interrupting the ability to catch it. However, that's supposed to work. But yeah, let's just uh, come on. Let's get into this fight, Kiram. I'm not really afraid of you anymore. I mean, you've shown off enough. Let's just let's do this, man. I ain't afraid. I will say, though, I mean. I don't know which one looks cooler, but, oh, Black Kirim, dude, look at, like, the the side of its body, like, its arm is, like, blue and black, that's so cool, that is so cool, man, it's so cool, so, anyways, guess this is gonna tell Kirim to challenge us, and I guess we can drop another quick save here, just in case you lose, you don't have to sit through that entire cutscene again, that would sort of suck, but, yeah, I'm beginning with Embor, um, again, this thing is a dragon and ice type, so kind of hard to match up against, I mean, it's weak to rock fighting um i think i think dragon it's still weak to dragon obviously not the best matchup because it's also super effective on dragon but i don't think it's weak to ice because i think ice resists ice not too sure though and oh i forgot we do have head smash which we learned recently and i mean for a battle like this i might as well go for it and is going to end up dying anyways but hopefully we can do a ton of damage with head smash Considering that we don't miss, which we don't. Let's see how much this does. I'm kind of curious. It's super effective. Yeah, not going to kill. And we're going to take a ton of recoil, but that's fine. We'll let Bacon go down. Um, Black Kirim knows Freeze Shock, Fusion Bolt, Slash, and Dragon Breath. White Kirim, if you're playing White 2, knows Ice Burn, Fusion Flare, and then also Slash and Dragon Breath. Once again, don't try to catch this thing because you just won't be able to. Your only goal right now is to defeat it so that the two Pokemon split up again. And now I've got Krusty out here. 
And, oh, that's right, I think Freeze Shock is a uh, charge-up move, like a two-turn move. So we get off the Rock Slide. Does it kill? Yes, it does. Yeah, that thing was kind of easy, honestly. Um, I had a couple of solid Rock-type moves, so, you know, so much for that gets us. So much for your whole Fusion, powerful mon. But, yeah, I mean, you know, Black Kyurem, White Kyurem, they are pretty powerful. But if you have six Pokemon compared to one, then eventually you're going to be able to win. Anyways, gets this is all mad. Like, no way. How did you beat it? How did you split him up? And now is time. Now it's time to take on Getsis himself because he's so angry. And it's time to finish off Team Plasma once and for all. You know, we thought we finished them off two years ago in black and white. No, sir. And hey, I mean, there's been talks about a black and white three or some sort of black two, white two sequel coming out soon in 2024 or 2025. So maybe this still isn't the end to Team Plasma. Anyways, he'll begin with his level 50 Kofagrigus, knowing Shadow Ball, Psychic, Protect, and Toxic, and it also holds the leftovers. So, this thing is straight up annoying, okay? It is very freaking annoying because it's going to poison you, and then it has the leftovers, and it's going to use Protect. And it, all it's going to try to do is stall you out. It's also very bulky. So, I know he's going to go for Protect right here. So I'm just going to take this time to use a full heal. And then unfortunately, I don't think Flamethrower will be enough to kill after the left. Oh, never mind. All right. Um, well, ooh, okay. Um, didn't see that one coming. Not going to lie. I, you know, I probably, well, I probably should have seen it coming considering that Psychic was super effective on us. But now I'm about to pro play him. He's going to go for Psychic again, and I'm going to be immune to it with Garfield. So let's see. Yep, there it is. We should outspeed with Night Slash. However, Kofagrigus, um, as I said, pretty tanky, very good defenses. I don't know if it'll kill unless we crit. You got to crit earlier, Lipard, but you don't get one here. Ooh, that's tough. And it's got the mummy ability. Yeah, if you make contact with it, then, uh, then you're going to get the mummy ability, which really isn't the worst thing in the world. So I think Getsis will use a full restore here. Really not the most terrible thing ever because you know at least he's getting his healing items out of the way on his first mon so come on we could use a crit garfield we could really use a crit now the good news is um Kofagrigus can't really touch us i mean shadow ball could still do a decent amount of damage but that's about it um it's just kind of mind games because i don't know if he's gonna go for protect here or not i'm kind of guessing that he will because i know getsis loves to use protect so I'm kind of hoping he went for Protect, which he did. Let's go. Thank you for giving me that free turn to use my full heal. And uh, now I'm just going to Night Slash again. Again, could really use a crit, Garfield. It'd be great. It'd be greatly appreciated. No, we do not get the crit. All right. Well, I think now I'm not even going to waste time healing that poison. I just want to take this thing out. Even if you do go for Protect one more time, that is okay. Um... I don't think he'll use another full restore. I don't even know if he has more than one full restore. I suppose we are about to find out though. Let's see. And nope, you just go for protect. That's perfectly fine. Um, you know, poison's not stacking up too much at the moment. And looks like Lipard will level up here, which is nice. Now, hopefully he doesn't get the double protect. Come on, don't be that guy. Don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do it. Yeah, he didn't even try. That's what I thought, man. That is what I thought. All right, so down goes Kofagrigus, and, um, you know, Getsis still has, I think, a full team of six, right? Well, now five Pokemon left, but you know what I mean. So next up is going to be, let's see, let's see, after all these freaking animations, Drapion. All right, this thing could be pretty tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, Drapion is a Poison Dark type, so it's only weak to ground, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't really know. I guess we'll just try to brute force our way through with Smokey. Um, this thing's down at level 50, knows Night Slash, Earthquake, Poison Fang, and X Scissor. So nothing super effective on us, but still pretty powerful. I think it's going to outspeed as well. However, I did forget that I have Charm, which could definitely come in handy. Um, yeah. Wow, we actually took that a lot better than I thought, too. So, if you have a ground type move, this thing's going to be pretty easy. But if not, you're going to have to uh, just find some way to kill it. Something that's neutral, I guess. And yeah, look at that. After the charm, now we're just tanking those hits for days. Icicle Crash probably going to end up being a three-hit KO. 
What would really screw us over is a crit from, uh, from Night Slash, but hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, I didn't get a crit with my Night Slash, so that means you should not be able to get a crit with yours, Drapion, all right? It's only fair that way. There we go. So finish you off with the brine, and down goes that thing. So yeah, it really does look like Guess this only uses one full restore, which is pretty nice. All right, next up is Electros. Oof. So he's uh, he's bringing out the big guns. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. Krusty? Yeah, seems all right. Um, I was thinking Bambi for a second, but Electros actually knows Flamethrower, so um, probably not the best idea. Along with that, it has Thunderbolt, Acrobatics, and Crunch, all-out attacking moveset. Um, this thing is a pure electric type that has the levitate ability, so don't try to go for ground type moves. And yes, that does mean this thing has um, no weaknesses, so it can be pretty tough to deal with. It also, as I said, has acrobatics, has no held items, so acrobatics is going to do double the damage. Luckily, Krusty surprisingly outsped. I think Electros is actually like slower than it may look. So yeah, down it goes. Um, that we were kind of just trading hits there. Not too bad. It looks like he's going out to Seismitoad next. So now I will go in to Salzbuck. Because Seismitoad is a water ground type, only quad weak to grass. Knows Muddy Water, Earthquake, Sludge Wave, and Draining. Or sorry, Drain Punch. Um, I'm just going to go for Horn Leech. I'm a little worried about a Sludge Wave or Drain Punch because those are super effective. But... We got a crit. I don't know if we needed it or not because we were quad effective, but uh, I will for sure take it. All right, so now he's going to go out to Toxicroak. I'm on four of, uh, or sorry, five of six. Let's go into Donald. Everyone's getting some action in this fight. Here we go. Toxicroak, poison fighting type, so weak to flying, ground, um, also quad weak to psychic. That's probably your best bet. However, I don't really have any psychic type moves, so I'm just going to use fly. This guy knows uh, Brick Break, Shadow Ball, Sucker Punch, and Poison Jab. Yeah, it seems like Getsus. Are you kidding? That is a 5% chance. Oh, I hate RNG. But yeah, it seems like Getsus is just obsessed with having attacking moves. Um, he doesn't really bother with like trying to set up or anything like that. Maybe besides Call for Grigus. And you're going to hit me with Poison Jab. That is... Oh, of course. Of course you'd get the Poison. All right, well, if I had to guess... Oh, and we died to it. I was thinking we'd live. All right, well, that sucks. You know, if you didn't miss your first fly, then you would have been fine. Um, who do I want to go into? Um, Garfield. Oh, boy. I think you outspeed this thing, right? You got to outspeed it. We'll go for... Uh, I guess... Um, what would do more? Shadow Claw or Return? Uh, let's try Shadow Claw. We do outspeed. Come on, it's not that much health. There we go. And we get a pointless crit. Nice. All right. So that only leaves Getsus's final mon, which is Hydragon at level 52. Um, it's holding a life orb, so it's going to deal a bit more damage with every attack. However, it's also going to take a bit of damage after every attack. It knows Dragon Rush, Crunch, Rock Slide, and funny enough, Frustration. Uh, yeah, I guess... This thing's happiness is just so awful that gets this was able to teach it frustration. Now, I'm just going to send in Bacon here to heal up Smokey. Um, even though this thing does have Rock Slide, I'm confident that an Icicle Crash, I don't know, may not be able to kill, but we'll definitely get it to where, like, whatever move I go for will kill. And Rock Slide isn't stabbed, so as long as I don't get flinched, then we are, uh, we are for sure chilling. Oh, he went for Dragon Rush. Okay. Um, not... Um, super effective on me. Still did a ton of damage and I flinch. Oh my goodness. <sighs> All right. Well, it looks like I'm sacking off someone else. Yeah. Um, you can see that he's already done, you know, a decent chunk to himself because of the life orb. And oh, you missed Dragon Rush. Perfect. Yeah. That's what you get for flinching me on the last one. How does it feel to have bad RNG? All right. Well, I guess we're going to. Hyper Potion Bear Tick again, and try to do the same thing again. So let's see, uh, let's see how, how this all goes. Um, yeah, Light Party, you're definitely not taking that, especially because it was a crit. And I feel like from this range, an Icicle Crash is going to kill. It's just, can we not get flinched? And can we land the Icicle Crash? That's all I need, baby. That's all I need. That is all I need. Rock Slide, super effective. Um, it's going to do about the same damage that Dragon Rush... 
<sighs> no, I, ooh, I love, I love Pokemon. Oh man, Pokemon. Oh, Pokemon is such a great video game. It is, ooh, man, it's such a good video game. Wow, this, this, this is a great video game. Honestly, everyone should be playing this. This is just a great video game. Dude, I, I can't believe that. We've been flinched twice. I mean, what is it, like a 10% chance? Maybe 20%? Even then, I mean, it's an 80% chance for me not to get flinched. I mean, what are we doing? At this rate, Hydreigon's gonna die to the life orb damage. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, would be pretty funny, but still, it's annoying. Um, Alright, here we go. Come on, third time's the charm, right? Third time's the charm. I mean, you know, that's how the saying goes. There we go. Okay. Wow, that was that was annoying. And wow, I just looked at my timer. This is over a 30-minute episode. Um, I guess maybe I could have cut out the Shadow Triad battles, but because they were all like technically boss fights, I didn't really want to cut anything out. So, uh, man, I guess welcome to the longest episode of the series. Anyways, yeah, gets this. Can't believe that he's now been defeated twice because, of course, you know, another trainer, which was also us, defeated him two years ago. So then N's sort of gonna try to talk him out of it, and then the Shadow Tried comes in, and he's like, yeah, I guess this is just angry, we're gonna take him away. He leaves behind his cane, though, not that you can really do anything with it, and you'll be able to, uh, to catch Kirim in the post-game, I believe. So, yeah, that is, uh, that is pretty cool, and shut up, I, like, just met you. You're kind of yapping at this point. And, um, yeah, he's going to ride Zekrom away. They had to have, like, broken the roof of the cave because, uh, yeah, we were definitely inside to begin. Here comes Hugh, though. Is it over? No, it's not over. <laughs> he says, I suppose you have to be the one to decide. Yeah, no, it's never over. I mean, hey, we could get Black and White 3 very soon, so maybe it really isn't over. Um, I don't really know what he says if you hit yes and then he mentions that past the giant chasm is victory road which will take you to the pokemon league and yeah that is the next step in our adventure and uh that's right i mean we're very close to the pokemon league now real quickly now that the plasma frigate is gone though um the giant chasm this whole crater area has opened up and there's a ton of items for you to run around and grab well not a ton but you know, a decent amount, so it's kind of annoying to navigate this place. There's all these, like, dead trees everywhere from where the ship flew away. So, I'm not sure if I'll, you know, spend time grabbing every single one of them. Um, there's also Rude and some of the X-Team Plasma Grunts. I don't think they give you anything, do they? Nah, no way. They just say farewell. Yep. Alright, so let's see if I can... I mean, there's that one Pokeball that's just in the middle. Here we go. We can get to it from here. It is a PP up. And then I think there may be like a couple in sort of the top left. I'm just zooming around on my bike. How do we get to that one? Looks like we need to come from the other side. Wonderful. I, I don't get why we can't just like duck below these dead trees. But no, my, my character is like the most unathletic human being ever. And yeah, we really have to go all the way around. Are you kidding me? So now we're kind of in the top left. Um, there's something you can grab all the way up here, which is a Carbos. I probably shouldn't be zooming around on my, on my bike because then I'm going to hop over the wrong ledge. And over here is a sunstone. And then I think there's one more item that I saw. And again, there might be more around here, but because this episode has already gone on for long enough, I don't think I'll really be searching for every single one. Yeah, it's over there. Let's see. How do we get that one? Um, not from there. Here we go. We're going to have to go a little down and around. TMO3 Psyshock. That might be something worth keeping um pretty interesting psychic type move that uses your special attack but the opponent's physical defense so can be a little strategic um is there something else i think if we go all the way down and then to the right there may be something else all the way around here could be a hidden item though let's see um here's a rock i don't know is there a hidden item in there nope let's see what's all the way through here yep here's the last item i knew there was something it is a star piece but uh, that is going to do it for today's episode. So yeah, we are done with Team Plasma. We will never see him ever again. Isn't that awesome? But next time we are going to head through Route 22, which will lead us to Victory Road. For now though, hope you guys enjoyed this longer episode of the walkthrough. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, deuces.